I love concentrates, and they are one of my favorite ways to medicate. But one type of concentrate I never buy is rosin, and I'm about to tell you all the reasons why. On this channel, we learn about a lot of things having to do with concentrates, and I have melt shots in my videos all the time. But you might have noticed that I almost never have any rosin, even though it's considered by many to be the best thing you can find. In this video, we're going to do a quick overview of resin versus rosin, the differences between the two, and some common misconceptions. This then I'm going to explain why when I'm looking for some quality concentrates, I almost never choose rosin. And towards the end of this video, I'm going to share some opinions that some people are not going to like at all. So let's get started. So if you're looking for concentrates and you really want to get the best product possible, there are a few options that stand out as clear winners, like concentrates made from fresh wheat, such as live resin and live rosin. These two have similar names, but they are both made in completely different ways. Concentrates Concentrates with live in the name refer to things that were made with weed that was frozen as soon as it was harvested so that the plant and the concentrates made from it retain almost all of the terpenes that were on the plant when it was alive. Live resin is made in many ways like lots of other concentrates using a complex extractor and solvents like butane or propane. But live rosin is made in fairly simple ways without using any solvents at all. With rosin you can use a fairly easy process where you you basically just squeeze your weed product with heat and pressure until all the oils come out. You can just take your frozen weed, use plain ice water to make hash, squeeze that hash in a press, and boom, hash rosin. You can even use less steps than that and just press whole buds until the oil comes out. So rosin is really simple and it doesn't require any chemical solvents. Using heat and pressure and maybe some ice water is clearly the more natural and organic alternative. So many people think that rosin is clearly the cleanest, best tasting type of concentrate you can dab. But that isn't always true. Now, if you don't want to use concentrates that were made with solvents because you're worried about residual trace amounts of those solvents being left over in your concentrates, I don't blame you at all. That is definitely a legit concern to have and black market concentrates definitely have the potential to contain residual solvents. All of the concentrates sold in legal markets are tested for a range of different contaminants, including processing chemicals and residual solvents before they can be sold, and they are generally considered to be very safe. But some people still just prefer the more organic route. But this is where we get into some common misconceptions and some of the first reasons why I almost never choose rosin. Some people will act like solventless concentrates are the only way to go and that nothing can match the purity or the taste of the almighty solventless rosin. But I don't think that's true at all. Let's say I had two concentrates, both from the legal market, and both are made from the same starting material. One is made with solvents and the other is rosin made with no solvents. Which one do you think has more nasty stuff in it that you don't want to dab? The answer seems to obviously be the one that's not made with chemicals, but in my experience that isn't always true. When you're extracting the oils from a plant with solvents, it is easy to separate the other plant fats and lipids that you don't actually want in your dabs. In the extraction process, you just remove these fats and lipids, you purge your solvent, and then you're left over with a pure and refined end product. When you make rosin, there are no solvents to remove. But you also never get a chance to remove any of those fats or lipids that can end up giving you a really nasty tasting dab. Cannabis plants do have certain and lipids that you want, like THC and your terpenes, but these plants also have a lot of other fats and lipids that you don't want in your concentrate, like cellulose and chlorophyll. If there's a lot of this stuff in your dabs, it can make it hit really harsh on your throat and it will leave behind that nasty, gunky residue in your banger. Hash rosin doesn't have nearly as many fats and lipids as flour rosin, but it still has way more than refined solvent extractions. And that isn't the only thing that can affect affect the taste of your rosin, you also have to think about what you're doing to your terpenes when you make rosin. The whole point of freezing the plants as soon as you cut them down is to prevent your tasty terpenes from evaporating or degrading, which begins to happen as soon as you harvest. All of the solvents that are used are also kept very cold and even the extraction room is cold because some terps start to evaporate at as low as 70 degrees. So when you keep everything cold through the whole process, you're able to preserve more of those 
terpenes that make your concentrate taste so good and have so many different medicinal effects. But when you make rosin, you are intentionally applying pressure and heat to these terpenes, which makes them evaporate like crazy. One test done by High Times Magazine to see which extract has the highest terpenes showed that out of all six types of concentrates they tested, rosin took fifth place with almost the lowest amount. The only concentrate they tested that had less terpenes than rosin was distillate, which is separated from the terpenes on purpose. And I'm not saying that rosin can't taste really great because I've had a lot of it that does. But this isn't the only thing I'm paying attention to when I'm at the dispensary. The process of making rosin is pretty basic when compared to extraction with solvents, but it also requires a lot more physical labor. Instead of the solvent doing all of the extracting, you have to pay people to stir ice water, make bubble hash, and run presses. Rosin making also has a smaller yield than solvent extractions. So even if you were to use the same amount of weed, you would get less back from making rosin than you would if you used the solvent. And since the extraction labs have to spend more money on labor to make it, and the grower gets back less from the same starting material, rosin is usually made in smaller batches and it is usually sold for a lot more money. When you're comparing rosin to other top-notch concentrates, it's not uncommon at all to see that the rosin is priced at 20, 30, 40, or maybe even 50% more expensive than any other concentrate on the shelf. I just can't afford to spend that much extra on concentrates. I am dabbing far too often for all that, especially when I can almost always find something that tastes better and costs less like a live resin made with solvents. I don't know, what do you think about rosin? Because I have had a lot of rosin that is really nice and I will still get some every now and then when I have a little bit of extra money, but I almost always wish I would have spent that extra money to just get two or three jars of BHO instead. And I am trying to spend my money wisely, but I also just want to get the maximum terpenes. Unless we're talking fake terpenes like the ones I covered in this video. I hate when companies use these fake terpenes and try to act like they're real. So make sure you watch this video if you want to understand all the three different types of terpenes and what they are and why having the real thing actually matters so much. I'll see you there.